G'day avocado enthusiasts and welcome to Scott Grows an Avocado Tree. The goal of this channel is to grow an avocado tree from seed to the point of bearing fruit whilst documenting the process. And we're documenting the process in this series of videos called Avocado Diaries. It's going to be a long-term project and we started our most recent attempt a couple of weeks ago, we started growing some avocado seeds using the plastic bag and paper towel method. I recommend you check out my previous video if you haven't seen it already. In it, I go into more detail of the plan for growing these avocado trees. I've had a lot of success in growing avocado trees in fish tanks. So we're gonna be growing these avocado trees in a fish tank as well. Fish tanks, the water is warm, there's nutrient in the water because of the fish, and so it just makes a really good environment to raise young avocado trees. So we're going to be doing that, and to do that, I need to set up a fish tank, which is what we're going to be doing today. <laughs> My plan is to set up a 40 litre fish tank. Then I'm going to put in some guppies and once the seeds have germinated, I'll be putting them in the tank in avocado boats so that they're floating on the top. But before we do any of the setting up, let's first talk about guppies. Guppies are sometimes referred to as million fish because they breed so well. They originate from the warmer freshwater areas of South America, but have been established in different places around the world. They are actually being used in some areas to combat malaria because they are quite happy to eat mosquito larvae. In captivity, they can live for around three years, sometimes a little longer. The males are often very colorful, especially in their tail and fin areas. The females are larger than the males and less colourful. Females give birth to up to 50 live young at a time. If a female has shared a habitat with a male, it is almost certainly pregnant. These are tropical fish that require water at around 24 degrees Celsius. Let's set up the tank. I'm going to set it up in the corner of my garage. You might recognise it from when I tried to grow potatoes indoors. I'm even using the same grow light and frame for the grow light to give the avocado trees the light that they need. Luckily for me, we have this small table which fits in between the frame supports perfectly. You might recognise this table from my one year avocado time lapse. Everything can be reused. I give the tank a rinse and set it up on the table. It's important to position it now because it's going to be very heavy once it's full of water. I bought some new gravel, a heater and a new filter for the aquarium. After rinsing the gravel with fresh water, it was ready to add to the tank. To make the fish home a little more interesting for them, I'm adding a piece of driftwood that I had set up in a tank a few years ago. I boil it before adding it, just in case there's any harmful bacteria on it. I had to manoeuvre it in the pot a bit because it didn't quite fit. Then I added the heater and filter and I made any final adjustments to the positioning of the tank. Before I added the water, I treated it with stress coat. This is a water conditioner which removes the chlorine and other harmful chemicals for the fish. I prepare a bucket at a time and added it to the tank. It was now time to turn the tank on and let it run. And I'm just going to pause here. Whilst the tank looks ready to add fish, it is not. Why? Well, the water has been treated. It's filtered, surely it's safe. Well, no, it needs to wait for the tank to cycle. What do I mean by that? Let me explain. Let's talk about the nitrogen cycle. When you hear people talking about their tank cycling, this is the cycle we're talking about. It's extremely important when starting new aquariums to understand this process. Nitrogen is added to the aquarium through fish food where it is consumed by fish or rots away if it's not eaten. The fish then produce waste and that waste contains nitrogen in the form of ammonia, which is toxic to fish. Ammonia is caused by other rotting material in the tank, such as dead plants and uneaten food. This is a problem. Ammonia poisoning is a very common way for pet fish to die. However, bacteria called nitrosomonas consume that ammonia and turn it into nitrite. Nitrite is also toxic to fish, which is a problem. But then another bacteria, Nitrobacter, consumes the nitrite and turns it into nitrate. 
Nitrate is also toxic to fish, but it has much lower toxicity levels than ammonia or nitrite, so fish can tolerate it in much higher amounts. Then the nitrogen in the form of nitrate is taken out of the water by plants as plants consume nitrates and enter that nitrogen back into the food chain, or it gets removed through water changes. It takes time for the cycle to establish itself. You need to wait for different bacteria cultures to grow. Fortunately, that's pretty simple, but it takes time. I have an advantage because I have established tanks already at home. I took my new filter, took out the sponge or the filter medium within it and rubbed it against the sponge from another established filter to transfer those bacteria. Then I seasoned the new filter in the established tank to help encourage that growth. I did this for two weeks before setting up the new tank. This, however, is not essential, but it may speed up the cycling process. Then after filling the tank and turning it on, I generously added some fish food. I needed a source of ammonia to get the bacteria growing. As the food decomposes, it will release that ammonia for the bacteria to consume. How will I know when it's cycled and ready to add fish safely? I test the water every few days for the next few weeks to watch what the bacteria are doing in my tank. I misplaced the colour chart so I had to compare it to one I downloaded onto my phone which doesn't show well in the video, but as you can see on screen, just a few days after adding the fish food, we were getting ammonia, but nothing else yet. After some more time and testing the water again and again, the ammonia levels continued to rise. I added some dirty tank water from my other tank to try and get some more bacteria in there. Most of the bacteria live in the filter, so this isn't a super effective method, but it's better than nothing. After a few more days, something had changed. The ammonia levels were going down and the nitrite levels were spiking. You can see there with the purple in the middle vial. The bacteria were doing something. I continued to feed the bacteria with fish food to keep that ammonia going, continuing to top it up with dirty tank water. In another week, there were very little traces of ammonia and nitrite, and whilst it's hard to see in this picture, the nitrate levels were slowly rising. My tank has cycled. I did some more tests over the next few days to monitor these levels, and due to no ammonia or nitrite spikes, and due to the nitrate slowly growing, I knew my tank had cycled. It was time to give the tank a clean. I took out around 25% of the water and I cleaned the filter in that dirty tank water because running under fresh tap water risks killing the bacteria. So cleaning in the old tank water is best. Then after returning the filter and topping it up with clean treated water, I just wanted to check the pH of the water. pH stands for potential of hydrogen and it just means how acidic or basic a substance is. It's measured on a scale from 0 to 14, with 7 in the middle being neutral. Pure water is a 7. The lower the pH, the more acidic it is. Things like lemon juice and vinegar are acidic, and the higher the pH, the more basic. Things like bleach and soap are basic. These substances are good for cleaning and sanitizing, but they're bad for things to live in. The water from your tap will generally be pretty close to a pH of 7, but fish are often quite sensitive to pH levels, and to give them the best chance of a long healthy life, it's good to make sure it's at an appropriate level. So using my pH testing kit, I test the pH levels. I'm going to be housing guppies in this tank, and guppies prefer it between neutral or slightly basic, so I'm going to be aiming for a 7 or slightly higher probably a little more acidic than I'd be going for, so we'll try and correct that. I use pH up to increase the alkalinity, or how basic, the water is. While I waited for the pH up to take effect, I decided to create a sign for the tank. I was quite happy with how it turned out. Okay, so we're aiming for seven or higher. And it looks like we're bang on a seven. That is perfect. We are ready to add fish. All that was left now was to get some fish. I keep fish, and in one of my tanks, I keep guppies. Guppies are excellent breeders, which is why they're sometimes called million fish. They are live bearers, which means that the mothers will give birth to litters of live fry. For this tank, I'm just going to take a couple of males so that we don't have to deal with the babies. I take the two boys, and I leave them sitting at the top of the tank in a jug so that they can acclimate to the temperature slowly. 
Moving tanks is a very stressful event in the life of fish, and easing them in is going to be key in maintaining their health. Just like us, too much stress is unhealthy. After giving it 15 minutes or so, I add some of the tank water into the jug to get them used to any changes in minerals or pH that they might experience. After another 10 minutes or so, it was time to release them. I turn the light off so as to limit the stress. The next morning I turn the light back on, and I notice that the water was a little cooler than I'd like, even with the heater. So I added an additional, small heater just to help the main heater out. The tank is in an unheated, poorly insulated garage, so it gets cold on cold days and nights. When it's at the desired temperature, the heat is turned off, so I'm not too concerned about using too much power. For feeding, I'm using tropical pellets, adding just two or three per fish. Too much food causes waste, and the potential for ammonia spikes, which we want to avoid. I'll feed the fish once daily. Each week, I'll conduct a 25% water change, where I'll take out 25% of the water and give the filter a rinse, and refill it with clean treated water. Once the avocados are in, they'll take care of a lot of the nitrogen, but there are other minerals which will build up over time, which may cause problems long term if I don't continue to take water out. And there we are. Before we finish, you ought to know their names. Avocado enthusiasts, meet Quark and Rom. Quark is the larger one, with the dark markings on his tail. Yes, they are named after Quark and Rom, the Ferengi brothers from Star Trek. And, well there we have it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it, and that you learned something from it as well. I find that fish keeping is a really enjoyable and rewarding process, but there's lots to learn in order to keep our fish as happy and healthy as possible. I'm looking forward to having these guys help me grow some avocado trees in the near future. The avocado seeds that we started germinating a few weeks ago are still germinating. I'm still waiting for cracks to appear. Once cracks start appearing, then they will be ready to go into the boats, into the tank, which will be uh, within the next month, I imagine, especially as the weather starts warming up here. We're now in spring in Melbourne, Australia. In a couple of weeks time, I'll be announcing the winners to the avocado boat flag competition. So keep your eyes out for that and make sure you're subscribed generally to Scott Grows and Avocado Tree so that you don't miss any future avocado diaries or any other avocado related content, which we'll be publishing here in the future. Thanks once again for watching. I appreciate you being here and we'll see you next time. Scott grows an avocado tree. Scott grows an avocado tree. Scott grows an avocado tree. Scott grows an avocado tree.